All right, guys, let's take a look at this Helsin Shark Diver. This is the 40 millimeter version. It's also the version that I kind of like the most. Um, and all the other models are actually really good. I'm referring to the 40 mil one, but most of them other than this one have either ceramic bezel insert and they'll have like printed on loom plots or indices. This one you can see has applied indices and it has a sapphire insert. So I think this has a, a little bit more of a premium look and feel to it with those elements, but it still has the robustness of the Helsin design. So I really do like this exact model. So big thanks to Chris for sending this over. This actually made its way originally from Bruce and then it ended up with Chris and now Chris uh, sent it in for us to check out. So it is a 40 mil watch, and you can see, um, you know, the overall design as aspects of the Helsin and of the Shark Diver. They have other version, other models, but the Shark Diver I think is probably the most popular. Not probably, it certainly is the most popular, whatever size, because there's multiple sizes of this uh, design. So 40 mil watch, 49 lug to lug. You can see there's actual like Allen head bolts, and they give you the tool. So if you want to pop those uh, spring bars, well, they're not really spring bars, actual bars out, you can pop that out and put on, say, like the included uh, isoframe style strap if you're so inclined to do so. But the bracelet is really nice. I would pretty much just keep it just like this. It's a really well done H-Link bracelet. So uh, 49 lug to lug. The thickness is just under 13 mil. It has a flat sapphire crystal, which sits just slightly proud. Um maybe with a chamfer over the sapphire bezel insert. And then you have a 20 mil lug width and the bracelet is 20 mil non-tapering down to a full milled out clasp that is uh, nicely done as well. So it has the double pusher lockers there and then it has the quick dive extension and then you have three micro adjusts on the back side of that. So the bracelet, I have a spare link sitting here. You can see they're all individual pieces and that adds to the uh, comfort level on this. And the H-links are actually pretty short. So you that combined with the three micro adjusts and then if you have to dial in a little bit with the extension, you're gonna be able to get this thing to fit your whatever wrist you have. But you can see the drape on this thing for as tough and uh, angular and everything that the bracelet looks, it actually flows really well. And it folds over, folds over instantly right onto the case back. So that 49 millimeter lug to lug is actually maybe even, a, you know, that's true or even shorter with the way the bracelet articulates. So let me pop it on wrist real quick for you and then we can do some close ups and we'll talk about the loom because the loom is killer too. So it's sized a little bit big for my wrist, but you can see on my seven and a quarter, I mean, it's I mean, it's just perfect. The 40 mil for me is perfect. I mean, I could do the 42, not a problem. And really, I could even go down to the 38 mil. But with that being said, the 40 is kind of the Goldilocks in between the two. So it would be my choice. Whether it be the stainless steel or the titanium, they also have some titanium ones. And then, like I said, they have a bunch of different variations. And if you actually reach out to Helsin, I don't know that they do custom orders, but you know, you can try to reach out to them and see what see what they have going on. Because they do so many different variations. The uh, angled uh, crown guards here are very tightly trimmed around the crown, signed crown, and uh, also very, very blocky. Like, the whole case is kind of very um, utilitarian and blocky looking. But the crown is uh, easy to operate. It has enough traction on it. Um, nice little pop to it. This has the uh, Miyota 9015 in it, so you're going to get the hand wind right, right here. You can wind it, no problem. You have the smoother, nicer sweep. Um, first position, you know, you're going to be able to do your date change. Second position, you can do your time set, and it's going to hack the movement. So let's get that out of the way a little bit. It screws in nicely. You don't have to backtrack it and then go forward or anything. It just grabs and goes. So let's zoom in, excuse any dust on there, but um, you have a nice clean matte black dial there. And then the date cut out in between the four and five, slightly towards the five, but with the black background and the white numbers, it flows really nice. 
slightly light orange colored for the shark diver printing and then the Helsin printing and the automatic 500 is kind of a silvery tone but you can see those applied indices are just phenomenal they're perfection and they're consistently filled you have the larger triangle up at the 12 three six and nine get smaller ones and then the rest of the indices are circles so very clean balanced out watch all all the models are like that and then they have some pretty cool colors as well you can see the cog style uh, bezel action going on here and it's really tight to the case plenty of traction on that and it definitely matches the overall aesthetics of the watch so if you get a closer look at the case back here you're going to see some a diver swimming with some shark and then you're also going to have the um, other information regarding the watch and its specs but as you can tell like everything the finishing is really nice and the uh, you know the fitment of the parts is actually really tight so there's a reason why helson is a fan favorite so this watch is, it's listed for $599, so say $600 watch. Think of any other $600 watch that, that can compete with this. There are some out there. There's actually quite a few really good $600 watches. I'm not going to get into a comparison on them, but I can say that the Helsin is definitely way up there towards the top. It's not even in the middle of the pack. It's, it's at the top or really close to the top, if that makes sense. You have a nice polished handset on this one. And you're going to have killer loom. I'm not sure exactly what loom they use, but it's got to be at least C3 if it's not even a more potent um, formula on top of that. So it comes with a really nice leather roll. Um, and it's all padded with the red suede type material on the inside. So it's going to come with that. It's going to come with the bracelet, the strap, this tool. You will need um, a really good set of screwdrivers because it's screw links on both sides. And they do use thread lock on it. So... You know, get yourself a nice set of screwdrivers and, I mean, you could potentially warm these up. Don't use like a heat gun or, I mean, you know, don't do anything that's going to change the color of the steel. You could warm them up a little bit and that might aid you in it. But, you know, putting them in like a bracelet block and holding on to them and getting them to break loose is um, key. I actually, I don't even know if you'd be able to do it in a bracelet block because you kind of need to get screwed screwdriver on both sides. So that part can be tricky for sure. But you really should only have to do it the one time. So um, let's check out uh, what it looks like next to an SKX. So this is the 40 mil Shark Diver 40 or SD40, a lot of people will call it. And then here's a SKX009. You can see they're very similar in size, but the I mean the quality level of the Helsin is just off the charts compared to the, the Seiko. The Seiko, as good as the Seikos are, um, when you hold them next to a Helsin, they feel a little toyish, um, and I'm not trying to downgrade Seiko. I'm just saying that the Helsin is that much more quality feeling because even like some really good Seikos, even like a, a Monster or, or higher up, you know, where they're a little robust feeling, the Helsin just feels even better yet again. The bezel action, 120 click, very positive, zero play, um, I'm not a huge fan of the audio on it. For some reason, it just sounds a little weird, but it's uh, tactile, a zero play. Like I said, everything lines up perfect, and it just it's it's a good bezel action. It's just not the sound it sounds a little off to me for some reason. I'm not sure why. So let me give you a loom shot. I'll even put the Seiko up next to it so you guys can see the Helsin loom is no joke. So there it is. And then another reason I like the sapphire bezel insert is because that loom is protected by the sapphire over the top of it. So it should last longer. It's not going to like wear out or anything like that. But you can see next to the, S the uh, Seiko loom, um, it's easily on par with it. If not, maybe even a touch better. So for $600... You might want to take a look at the Helsin website and see if there's one there that, you know, tickles your fancy. You know, they've done some Swiss movement ones, but really the Miyota movement is actually really killer. And the rotor noise is there, but the case is so robust that it's not as, um, if it bothers you, it's not as bothersome as I've felt in other watches. Like it's a little less noticeable, but there's tons of guys out there, including myself, that find it slightly charming sometimes to have that rotor spin. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next vid.